have sunk an enemy destroyer. Hey team, this is Ripper here. We guys are doing fantastic today. Got a really fun video and review about the Alvaro de Bazan. Uh, forgive me if I butchered that. Before we get into the subscribe button, we'll appreciate all the support of the ch uh, supporters of the channel. Can't thank you guys enough of uh, making this community a better place and uh, having a blast doing it. So finally got the last of the destroyers that I need to unlock for tier 10. Uh, if I'm missing one, let me know. But I think I've gotten almost every single one of tier 10. And that's my favorite level. I, I enjoy it. It's pretty... It's pretty fun. It's uh, enjoyable, but uh, it, I finally got it. Someone asked me to do a review about it, so let's take a look at it. So while we're sailing uh, to Cap Bravo, again, I'll have the build at the end of the screen. You can see RPF build, and uh, I even got Oslane's mod finally, and uh, you could see it's uh, on the video. Of course, uh, when you record, re watching a replay from the replay video, you can't see the uh, timers at the top. They're working, so that's one downside about that. But let's talk about Tier 10 Destroy Alvaro de Bazan, Mark Spain's second entry into the game and its first higher tier ship. Primarily a long range gunboat play style. So you're going to kind of see that. I haven't built the commander all the way out. It's only to 18. So we'll see if I can get the, long, the guns a little bit longer range out there. But uh, that's pretty much what the. The ship is designed for is that long range kind of Kabaros and Kleber play style, but her unique burst fire mechanic sets her apart. So you're getting kind of that long range style gameplay, Kabaros, Kleber, if you guys are used to that, but you're also getting the uh, burst fire like the Cap the um, Zorky on uh, the uh, tier, super tier 11 ship, if you want to call it that, uh, has. And that's really just literally. Uh, just sending a bunch of shells down range. If you want to take a look at it, here's the uh, burst fire mode right here. It's F key again for this kind of thing. It makes your shots 1.06 second intervals and you get three bursts of them. So you're getting a lot of firepower down range. And with these guns, 135 millimeters of pen, 23 millimeter armor, 12.6 range to do 1950 damage, 9% chance fire. Like I said, a standard 4.8 second reload time. I've noticed the burst fire isn't as a horrendous long of reload. I mean, you're getting it about 18 to 16 second-ish uh, once adrenaline, run, adrenaline rush kicks in. So you're getting a fairly decent amount reloaded. It's not like you're waiting an eternity for these guns to work. As we get to uh, torpedoes coming right there, that's, uh, that's another good thing is always get ready to exit the area, especially if you can spot. And now if those are Holland torpedoes, I probably would have been dead. Uh, but yeah, I got this engine boost ready to go. I'm always having an exit strategy pointing in a direction that gets me out of dodge. And that's another great way to learn a game, um, destroy game player style. I'll talk about, you know, being a good destroyer player throughout the video, but we're primarily talking about Alvaro de Bazan. And then, of course, the AP uh, shells, 135 millimeter, do 2,500 damage. So uh, we'll take a look at how do you use both of them. Honestly, I feel that the HE is better for 135 millimeter what you're doing but it's a really difficult i'm i'm gonna say tldr this this boat is very just weird it feels weird uh, it's got a 30,000 hp so look you can see right here 30,000 hp a health pool right there very very good a lot a lot of you know health for a destroyer my gosh you're almost like a light cruiser but for some reason the guns when you're watching the video look, pay attention to the, the guns and the, the way the shells are hitting i built for you know good accuracy and dispersion but i just don't feel I'm getting that that accuracy that I need, so I'm gonna have to give this thing a thumbs down in the accuracy department. It's got four sets of them, which you think I think again, four sets of guns, double barrel. You're getting eight sets of guns, uh, single barrels each, eight single barrels on four turrets. And honestly, I don't feel it. I I, I think the Kleber has better accuracy. Marceau does a better job DPM wise uh, for the four style guns. Kabarov's a little bit better too. Uh, and G Gdansk with the four turrets, even though it has one set less barrel. It still does a good job. Now let's take a look at the Jutland here. Okay, let's take a look at how I'm aiming. Uh, let's be a. Let's pause the video so you can take a look. So how am I aiming right here? Notice he's in reverse. I again, Aslane's mod tells me the red dot means he's in reverse, which means I'm going to start leading the shells. I'll put the reticle somewhere on the at least back third of a ship. When you put the back third of a ship, obviously the shells are going to come out, and they're gonna, eventually he's going to he's going to basically drive into them. So as he's reversing, the shells are coming in. They're coming in, and they're going to eventually land. Uh, where the where I want the probably around this forward section right here because I'm leading the target and he's backing into him So hopefully I, as I lead further he's gonna just drive right into the shell So that's how you lead for that one right there now watch I'm gonna use the burst fire here So what I, what the strategy I do is look I'll take a look at his health 11,000 First I get a first set of shots up. I'm gonna see if those shells actually hit which means I guess and test if my accuracy is good and then i select the f key basically just hit an f and then when you fire watch here's the burst fire here let's take a look at it there's a full salvo right there one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and look at that 
We get them down to about, so you're going to get a rough gauge of how much damage you can do, getting all 19 shells on target. Did about, about 10k worth of damage, and fortunately we were short uh, on getting that final shell in there. So you kind of have to think about, well, how much, when, when do I hit the F key to wait for that reload? Notice it's very quick cooldown, not that bad. Even 18 seconds, it goes by quick. And uh, you just want to use it at the right appropriate time when you think you can knock this guy out about, and kind of like the Zorky gameplay style. I kind of wait till someone's down to 10k health, and then I select burst fire, and, and if I'm sure I got the good aim, I'll just go ahead and shoot. Now look at the accuracy of these things. I'm, I'm aiming. I'm getting some shots. They're doing decent damage. Five pin hits, only get 900. Look at that. Okay, at the, this time I know he's going to go undetected, so I send the burst fire right there. Look, 15 to 16 second reload time. I think it was up to 17, but uh, yeah, about 18 second reload time. So it's fairly not unnoticeable. I would say that it's not bad of a re reload cooldown time. So it's very good at this point. Now, this is that long-range gunboat action that we were talking about here. You notice we can get out to 12.6. That's what we built for. Uh, once I get the commander build up to 21, I can get this thing out to maybe about, what, 15-ish? Maybe 14 or 15-ish, which gives that accurate... I mean, sorry, long-range gunboating. But notice the accuracy. I just don't feel it. I mean... I'm getting seven non pans of guns I thought were big, but when they do connect, maybe it's just me poor aiming. I don't know. Something weird about it. It starts enough fires. But let me read about while I'm shooting. Uh, you're enjoying the background shooting of the uh, Salem here. The armament, like other guns, focus Alvaro de Bazan's primary source of damage is her main battery, which you're sh seeing right now. She mounts eight 135mm guns and four twin turrets. Her main battery range is above tier 10, although slightly below average compared to her gun gunboat counterparts, which we're talking about. However, both their 5.5 second main battery, uh, second main battery reload and 18 second turret reverse are among the worst in her tier. So you can see right there, the turret reverse, uh, again, slow. I had to build the commander to at least turn for a little bit to increase it. Her HE and AP shells both deal high damage and her HE shells have a high base fire chance while her AP shells penetrate more armor than most destroyers. So maybe I should start playing with AP a little bit more. However, her slow reload leaves her a sustained DPM in first sets and fires fires set per minute well below the competition and other gunboats with strong ap like Claber and elbing and even cabros can penetrate even thicker armor although she struggles in a dpm fight her flat ballistics and fast shell flight times allow her to reliably engage targets at any range so i don't know they they, they say they want to build this thing for a long range gunboat but i'm just not feeling it i mean i, I feel like I'm, hit, I'm shooting and i'm not i'm just not connecting with as much firepower dpm uh, that i would like Alvaro de Bazan features the burst fire mechanic found on some super ships. When selected, you can fire several salvos in quick succession, but suffers a substantially longer reload afterwards, which isn't bad to me. I thought the 18, 15, you know, 16 to 18 seconds wasn't as bad. It's best used for quickly finishing a low health destroyer, as you saw earlier, or trying to set some fires after a target uses damage control party. Otherwise, a longer reload time is a significant trade-off, and she should and she should stick to regular fire mode. In addition to her main guns, Alvaro, Alvaro de Bazan carries eight torpedoes in center, two centerline racks, identical to those found on Atelier Regolo. Their 13.5 kilometer range is above average for her tier, and they reload quickly at only 90 seconds, as you can see right there. At the bottom, they're almost ready off cooldown. But there's some, some of the slowest and lowest damage, uh, damaging torpedoes at tier 10. Agile targets will easily dodge them if spotted, so they're best used against large, tar large and clumsy battleships and, uh, or fire for uh, to strategic choke points. Uh, the consumables are expected. The same thing. You got the smoke generator and the engine boost. Both have three charges by default. Um, it, the, the only thing I see me, myself using the, the, the consumables for really is the, the smoke is if you want to farm and, and just kind of go undetected real quick. And honestly, the engine boost is good, but only improves about 8%, but for at least a little bit longer time. Let's see, let's take a look at it. So the engine boost right here, it's 8% increase, but the, it lasts two minutes and you only get two, three of them, I think. So this. The speed, eh, I mean, it gets it up to 45-ish knots, so it's it's fairly fast. I mean, let's, let's see let's see if we mow down this uh, Fletcher here. So, look, I'll hit the engine boost right there, and let's see how fast we can get this thing up. And you can get it up to 45-ish, I believe, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, we get about 45-ish knots, max speed. So, fairly quick for two minutes, not bad. Maneuverability, uh, like Kabrov's Alvaro, Alvaro de Bazan is fast, up to 40 knots, like we just talked about. Up to 45 knots if you get the uh, mounted flag and the engine boost active. So we got this burst fire. We're going to finish off Destroyer. And pretty much I'm just walking the shells on target. And we would have connected there, but someone got the kill before Stalingrad. Way to go. Survivability, Alvaro de Bazan is fairly durable for Destroyer, although she lacks thick armor or repair party like Kabaros and Ragnar. Our uh, Clabaris French Saturation Shield boasts one of the large health pools of her Tier 10 destroyers. She can survive longer than many other destroyers, but any damage she takes is permanent. 
Whenever possible, she should use cover her smoke screens and distance to avoid taking unnecessary damage. Her surface concealment is average at best, reaching a 6.2, which honestly, for today's meta, I think it's okay. I mean, if you're going against Gearings and Shimakazes, okay, you're just going to have to run them down or run away. So that's pretty much the play style you notice right there. Let's speed up the video here. You can see as we we're getting back in the middle there. Battle performance like her uh, gunboat counterparts, Alvaro Bazan is most comfortable seeing a medium and long range dealing damage to whatever she can and uh, and then using her distance and speed to dodge return fire. Her torpedoes are effective for air denial against large and distracted targets. Uh, but her guns, uh, like I said, were distracted targets. Were, that's pretty much it. Now, watch the accuracy on these things. I don't mean, I don't know. Uh, you tell me how these things are. I, I just don't feel it. It just... I'm just not getting enough good accurate shots or enough firepower on target, it feels like. That's why I feel a little bit weak in the Alberta Bazan. So maybe maybe it's just a gimmick. I don't know. It's something something about it is off. You guys tell me. She can get close to feel more traditional uh, destroy rolls when the team lines up, forces her to, but she isn't uh, she's still suited for a close range. Or I'm sorry, she isn't suited for close range engagements where her poor agility and slow turret traverse make her an easy target for enemy destroyers. Her high speed allows her to react quickly as the battle develops, repositioning her guns and needed. Her burst fire mechanic allows her to quickly eliminate a low health target or deal a bit more damage before ducking behind island cover. She may not be the strongest or most unique gunboat in battle, but she was reliable and effective enough to carry her own weight while offering a slightly different take on larger range or slower reload gunboat playstyle. So, bottom line, how do I feel about this? It's okay. I think this is an average destroyer. I mean, the only thing it's got going for it is the health pool. It'd be 30,100 in the burst fire. I mean, that is very, very powerful in my personal opinion. Um, honestly, would I play this often that much? I've only seen it maybe once or twice in a competitive, most, maybe sometimes in randoms. I don't see many people playing it. Although it is somewhat of a strong ship, I just don't feel like the firepower is there that I need. Uh, even though this is advertised as a long-range gunboat, it just something about the accuracy, the Sigma, or whatever it is, it just doesn't feel like it's doing great uh, for what I need it to do. The torpedoes don't really do that much. I mean, they're long-range, I get it, but people can avoid them. Everybody's got Hydra up. The burst fire really is the selling gimmick of this thing. Uh, I have to have RPF in order to figure out where these guys are going if I want to chase them down. The engine boost is good. I can get up to 45 knots pretty quick. The smoke is there, standard smoke, whatever. But really the selling point is just having a large amount of health pool to bully people around and then run away if you need to, smoke up. And watch here, here's the Holland. Here's a pretty uh, good example of the burst fire gimmick. And, and this is pretty much it for me. I, I think this is the only gimmick that this really provides. No, I mean, this thing doesn't have hydro, no heals, no radar, no nothing. It's really just run and gun. Hopefully I get spotted. Someone fires me and I'm just surviving off the HP pool. Uh, but really... It can go in and cap with 6.2, but if you got a Shima, uh, Jaeger, or a Gearing, or something out there that can outspot you, it's going to be a real difficult time. You're going to get radar, focus down, whatever. And really, here's just bullying the destroyer. Uh, really, at you know, you get a lot of that DPM right there if you get close engagements. The, it's got the third turret that is a 360 turret, which is nice. Um, but you got to get off. You got to give a little more angle. And here's the burst fire. Get them all on target, and boom, there it goes. So you got to just gauge it just correctly, just the right amount of time. And uh, that's it. Again, as a good destroyer player, always turn away or turn in. As you can tell, the Holland probably launched Torp, so we're going to always be conservative and run away and dodge and hopefully mitigate that. And he probably didn't have any on cooldown. But bottom line, what do I think of Alvaro de Bazan? I think it's average, honestly. It's uh, it's Even though it's got an extreme amount of HP pool, um, it's got the burst fire. That's the only gimmick it really has. Uh, it's, it's just very situational, very selective play style. And uh, that's it. That's the gimmick. I really, I don't see it much in competitive, and I don't see, I really see many people playing it in randoms either. But let me know your thoughts on it. What is your take? Uh, Bill will be at the end of the video, by the way. But what is your take on the Alvaro Bazan? Do you like it? Do you want it? It's available in the armory for coal. Uh, it, uh, it's there. It does okay damage. I mean, look, I didn't really do too much damage, and I could do way more in other uh, destroyers right there. It just didn't feel like I'm... I am being very productive, in my personal opinion. I wish I wish it would do it could do more. I, I mean, the amount of games I've played, the most damage I've ever gotten maybe was about the eight, you know seventy to eighty thousand, and I tried my best to do whatever I could, but pushing it even further the limits is really just doesn't survive like um, I wanted to. So again, Bill will be at the end of the screen, and I uh, hope you enjoy it, and uh, let me know your thoughts. Let's take a look at the build. And as you see the build right there, basic gunboat, um, you know, again, slot th in mod th or section 3, mod 3, it, it, has the, um, it has the accuracy, of course, for more better dispersion. Everything else is engine-related boost, whatever, concealment, and, of course, main battery reload. 
Uh, and moving on to the commander again, he's not only a 19 point commander. I didn't get the full one yet. So basically, church reverse is a must because the guns and turrets turn really slow. I just went off ba the basic recommendation, except for I needed RPF. I've noticed RPF is very, very good these days with um, for situ situational awareness, adrenaline rush, and survivability, getting you up to that 30,100 uh, health pool point. And of course, concealment could get you down to 6.2. The next one I'm going to do once I get to 21 point commander, we'll try the long range build and see, you know, if I push it out to about 14 or 15 kilometer shots, does that make this more effective long range gunboat? Just like I talked about, I've noticed that the, um, uh, AA expert, whatever that is on uh, the third row there that increases the reload by 5%, 5% really doesn't do it for me these days. I mean, what is you're knocking down 0 0.1, 0 0.2 seconds. It's not really cutting it for me. And, and that's my basic build for it. So I, I'm liking the, the, the current build that is. And, um, Again, Alvaro Bazan, it's it's okay to store. In my opinion, it's an average one. Really, the gimmick is just the health that it has and the burst fire. But you guys want to figure it out, try to play it in your style, and see if you can make it work. I, I try to make it work, but it's really difficult for me. But again, I still think it's okay average-wise. But would I choose this over competitive? Not really, maybe. And then uh, for maybe randoms, just for fun, uh, just to see how it does. But as always, you guys stay safe. You see me out there, say hi. And thank you guys for supporting the channel and the community. And you guys take care. Be safe. Cheers.